Uh, so I present some results that were obtained uh, in joint work with Jeff Schenker. And well, let me, let me just remind you uh, so what localization is, right? I'm sure you've been exposed to the topic before that, but uh, nevertheless. So to make it simple, I do uh, as uh, <coughs> Alexander Kushnitsky did last week, I speak about uh, matrices and one dimensional, and actually usual matrices. And uh, so D equals one. Uh, let's consider the following matrix. In, right, but I consider well just like Sasha did. I consider infinite matrix, right, on the half axis, right, and uh, I assume that my omega i are i larger than zero or one actually larger than one are real numbers, right, uh, and I put another matrix on the board. Okay. Uh, well, the matrix is going to be another well-known matrix. So zero outside, it's going to be here, zero on the diagonal, and uh, one off diagonal, off on the lower diagonal, and uh, one on the upper diagonal. So uh, this I will call V omega, right? And uh, this I will call, well, the usual name, minus the Plasian. Okay, I won't change wow. it. Huh? Well, no, I call it minus Laplacian. It doesn't matter, actually. I call it minus Laplacian because I'm used to minus Laplacian, right? This one is symmetric. I agree with you. But, uh, okay, if you want, uh, let's put two here, right? You can put two here. And uh, so I come to something more standard. You're right. But the constant, uh, I, anyway, quotient by constant. Okay, so we all know, well, for this one, that's uh, pretty clear, the spectrum of V omega is made only of eigenvalues, right? And uh, well, the eigenvalues are exactly written here on the diagonal, right? And this is empty, okay? On the other hand here, the spectrum of minus Laplacian, well, this is uh, what this is, what this is going to be, just the AC spectrum of Laplacian. And the singular spectrum is empty, right? And the question is, whoops, and the question is, what happens if I consider so be, yeah, the sum? What happens for the spectrum of these two? Who wins, right? Well, and the theorem proved by many Studied and proved, actually. Not for this particular matrix, right, but. What was the first? Uh, well, no, the first was not this, actually. It was something much more complicated than that. Ah. For this one, it took more time, right? For the simple, the very simple one, it took more time. Uh, many, I won't cite all the people, there are many famous people in the list of people that worked on this. Uh, is that, well, if you are willing, if omega is random, so what I mean with random is something, actually to be a bit more specific, is that the omega n, it's not really necessary, right? Uh, independent, identically, distributed random variables. Well, actually non-trivial, of course, if they are essentially, almost surely constant, it's not really random. Uh, Non-trivially, non-trivial random variables. They win. Well, the spectrum of minus Laplacian plus V omega is equal to the pure point spectrum of minus Laplacian plus V omega. So this is uh, the closure of the set of eigenvalues and the continuous spectrum is empty, okay? And moreover, 
So, uh, so this is in dimension one. Actually, in dimension one, the result in this form, uh, in something more precise, actually, that I'm going to tell you right in a moment, uh, is due to, I think, I think, uh, Kunz et Suya. They were the first for this model. Actually, there was a... Yeah, for the discrete on this model, I think they were the first. There was the, the famous Russian model, right, where you have Gocha and Bochan of Pasteur, who proved it a few years earlier. So this may be 79, and uh, Gocha and Bochan of Pasteur, I think, was 76 or 77. Uh, but it was for a more complicated model. Okay, but it was, uh, of course, the same underlying yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, it was a one dimensional differential oh, operator, oh, and. Oh, yeah. hmm? It was way back. No, it was earlier. It was earlier. It was a couple of years, maybe three years, two years earlier. Not Russian model, but uh, Anderson model. Oh, Anderson model uh, in one dimension, uh, well, it was, yeah, it was uh, later again. I, I don't, well, actually, I don't remember precisely why the prehistory yeah, right, of the, the subject, but so it was. was the Russian model. Yeah, the first was a Russian model, that's for sure. Golchan, and Mochanov and Pasteur. There were three authors. No, 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 I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure that this was the second. I mean, because there were many works going on, no, right? In any, in any case, the, the differential equation was later. The differential equation the, was later. Yeah, there were many results, actually, the model, but uh, this one was later. But, of course, they didn't treat only with this one. It, was, it, was one, it wasn't really of importance that it's the minus Laplacian. If you had any kind of Jacobi matrix with, uh, um, with what? They need an analytic symbol. You had the same kind of results, right? And... Uh, so, but I think this is constant Suya by a very, uh, a very nice method, actually, in 1D. And uh, well, the important thing is, the other thing is the following, uh, is that uh, what you have uh, is that, moreover, moreover, if uh, E belongs to the spectrum of, uh, to the pure point spectrum, so it's an eigenvalue, Sorry, uh, eigenvalue of H or minus Laplacian plus V omega. So take almost omega almost surely, right? And you take an omega, uh, well, one thing I didn't say is that omega almost surely, then omega almost surely you have this, right? And so moreover, Omega almost surely, this is also true, omega almost surely, it's the same set as this one, right? Anyway, two sets of measure one will be the same. Uh, measure theoretically. If E is an eigenvalue of minus Laplacian plus V omega, uh, and uh, phi uh, is an associated eigenvector, then there exists some constant C, which depends on omega and the energy E, such that phi of x is C E to the minus, uh, well, mu, uh, well, rho of E x, right? Uh, so you, you can't have it, well, let's take it depending on phi, but that's not a problem. Anyway, the eigenvalue is unique. This is one dimensional, so the eigenvalue, the eigenfunction is unique, right? Normalized eigenfunction is unique up to a constant of modulus one, which will not change this inequality. And what is rho of E? Rho of E is the Lyapunov exponent. Yeah, it's the Rapun of exponent at, uh, at energy E. So what is this? Let me just tell you what. Yeah, I'm going to the other, the other, black, the other blackboard. Uh, what is uh, rho of E is just if you take the norm of, so now as I took this one, I have to take two, one, two plus omega one, two plus omega two. Right, uh, I need to take the transfer matrices. Uh, sorry, no, this is not what I want to do. So minus E. So uh, minus E, one, one, two plus omega two. Huh? 
Uh, yeah, this is your, your right. And minus Oops. one. Uh, well, I take minus one, yeah. Uh, no, actually, do I take minus one? Anything? Yeah, uh, yeah you're right. It's. Uh, minus one and one. Well, why, why minus one? Let me, let me rewrite the equation. Plus and theory of minus. You have the determinant to be equal to one. That's fine. It, it, it does, okay, you can take the determinant to be equal to one. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, you are fine. That's fine. Okay. Omega 2 minus e minus 1 and 1. So you take this matrix, right? It depends on n. And this uh, is uh, the norm of this, the usual L2 norm, right? So the, as an operator on two by two matrices, uh, is going to be given by E rho of E plus middle rho of one, right? And this is when N goes to plus infinity, and this is omega almost surely. Right, it's just the growth rate of this product of matrices. And this defines the row of E in a unique way, okay? Uh, <coughs> and so, actually, that this was the case was assumed in a much more general situation by a physicist, I mean, that was proven, quote unquote, as much as uh, solid state physicists prove anything, right, by a, a famous Nobel Prize winner. He was already a Nobel Prize winner by the time it was proved mathematically. Right, but in 58, Anderson conjectured this kind of behavior, right, for the eigenvalues of not only this operator, but more generally. And you take the Laplacian plus V omega, where minus Laplacian, so H omega is this. Uh, minus Laplacian is the usual Laplacian. on ZD, right? And V omega is, for example, well, is the sum for gamma in ZD, right, of omega gamma. And here you just take the projector on the gamma side. So delta gamma is the unique vector which has a one on side gamma and zero elsewhere, right? Uh, this is the usual bracket notation of Dirac, and the omega gammas are I, I, D, right? Independent, identically distributed. And usually what you do, right, uh, for lambda positive, and then the theorem, which was first proved, actually, essentially, it's uh, the basic of the proof goes back to, well, actually, a very important estimate goes back to Freurich Spencer, and this was 83. So this was essentially the first result in, uh, in many dimensional cases. Right here, dimension is arbitrary. And then I think it is uh, Martinelli Scopola who proved actually the following thing. Well, actually, well, let me go. There is a long list. And uh, it was, I mean, there was, so this is 83, this is somewhere around 83, 84, and this is uh, 2015. This is Eisenman and Wassel. They have a very nice book on the topic, okay? And what they prove is something slightly different, is that uh, let uh, let what? Uh, let's do the following. Uh, for lambda large enough, there exists lambda zero positive, such that for lambda larger than lambda zero, uh, if I take uh, the sum of e to the minus, there exists mu or rho, which depends on lambda, right, positive such that uh, if you do the following, take the sum of uh, what? Over gamma in ZD of E to the minus rho, uh, sorry, plus rho gamma minus gamma prime, right? 
uh, and you take the soup over functions right, that are real valued, real valued, measurable, and that are L infinity of L infinity norm less than one. Take the function of the operator minus Laplacian plus lambda v omega and look at its kernel at gamma and gamma prime. Gamma and gamma prime, right? Take the modulus of this. Okay, so for example, you could take this to be a spectral projector. F, right, which is a characteristic function of some set. Okay, you could take this to be the semi-group, right, e to the it h omega. And you look at the expectation of this for any gamma prime. This is finite. Right? Okay. In particular, what you can show is that this implies that the spectrum of minus Laplacian plus four lambda lambda larger than uh, lambda zero. The spectrum of minus Laplacian plus lambda v omega, uh, what is uh, equal to the pure point spectrum, yeah. uh, the continuous spectrum of this thing is empty, right? And if you take the following correlator, q omega of gamma gamma prime, what is this? This is the sum, so it's well defined, this is well defined omega almost surely, so this is omega almost surely, and if you define q omega omega prime to be the following thing, take the sum over all the eigenvalues, so this is a enumerable sum, right, E eigenvalue of H omega, we are dealing of, uh, of a separable Hilbert space, right, with a separable Hilbert space, of what, of phi gamma, phi gamma prime. So of course these, these are the eigenfunctions associated to the eigenvalue E omega, there may be many of them, right, it need not be uh, simple, it depends on uh, oh yeah, one thing I didn't, IID, and I, I, there is a condition missing on IID here, right? It's not, uh, it's not that simple, okay? This was correct in this case, in the one-dimensional case it's easier, but in this case it's a bit more complicated. There is a condition missing. I put the condition uh, in, uh, in a second on the board. Then, then what? Then, well, uh, the sum over gamma in ZV for any gamma prime, well, there exists a constant C, positive, such that for any gamma prime in ZD, when you take the sum E to the minus, uh, so the, the row is the same, E to the row gamma minus gamma prime of the expectation of Q omega gamma gamma prime, this is bounded by C, right, it's finite. Right, and it doesn't depend on gamma prime. The condition, actually here, this, this expectation doesn't depend on gamma prime either, right? Because of the fact that it's IID, you can translate things and transform gamma prime into zero. So the condition that I was missing here is that uh, distributed according to the density have rho already, so let me call it nu of omega d omega, right, such that nu has compact support and nu is bounded. It's not really necessary, right, you can relax this, but the fact that it has some continuous distribution is, it's not necessary in a mathematical sense, right, but it certainly helps in the proof. Yes? Just one thing. What is the distinctive trait? For example, this is equality, and so this equality. 
<laughs> well, the simplest way is take spectral projectors, yeah. right? If you, as f can be any measurable function, you can take, <laughs> exactly, characters function. And what you get if you take the spectral function, right, what you get here is that it's, well, the, the, the simplest way is to see that this actually here, this soup, is equal to that. Exactly, but what you can show from a measure theoretic, so that's a, a problem in spectral theory, right? Nothing to do with randomness, okay. is that this quantity, right, just by the reasoning that we just said, because f can be characteristic functions of very singular set, mm -hmm. sets, this is actually equal to that. And once you have it here, what you know is that phi gamma, phi gamma prime, right, is once you know that the expectation of this sum is less than c, you know that almost surely this sum is finite, right? Multiplied by this, almost surely this is finite, right? So any number almost surely here is going to be less than a constant times the inverse of this factor. And now phi is normalized, so the phi gamma, the phi regas are normalized by one, okay? And you take the largest one, and you get that this is phi omega gamma, right? Is going to be less than a constant times e to the minus gamma minus gamma prime. So you see that the eigenvector is exponentially localized. Yes? Yes, but that's the whole point of the spectral theoretic computation that it's equivalent. Right? It's not, you're right, you're right, it, it seems to be, but you can actually turn it around and see that it's the same. Right? This you can, you can turn out, because the idea is the following part, is the following is that here you can relate this immediately to the spectrum measure, right? And in the spectrum measure, the only thing you need to be able to do is separate positive, it's a positive measure, right? So the only thing you need to do is to have it for this positive measure. Okay, and then you see that the, the positive measure is going to satisfy, I mean, actually, what you have is, this is a complex measure because gamma is different from gamma prime, right, underlying, so you prove it for the complex measure. Okay, and now you just need to show that if the thing holds for the complex measure, it holds also for the real part, imaginary part, right, and then the positive part and the imaginary and the negative part of the real part and and of the imaginary part. And this way you separate and obtain this. Right, so this is a measure theoretic computation. Okay? And it comes from the fact that you can really take any function f here measurable so that this will enable you to cut the measure into pieces where you just have the imaginary part, uh, sorry, the, re the positive part and the negative part, right? Because these two sets are, of course, uh, mutually independent, uh, what do you say, mutu mutually singular, right? Uh, pop, pop, pop. Okay, and so, uh, well, so what does this tell us? Okay, so you have this, right? So actually, when people first prove localization, exponential localization, they didn't get these results, right? So this is really what you had in eisenmann wartzel in the latest, in the most sophisticated thing. So actually, uh, such results date back to earlier than eisenmann wartzel It's just I put the quotation of their book because uh, it's, it's a nice uh, overview of the many things that, ha that are known for these models in actually a much more general setting that I'm dealing with here. And, <coughs> but, what can you say about the eigenfunctions, right? Okay. What can you say about the eigenfunctions, so, themselves? So here we said that we had something like this. Okay, there exists some constant here. But what does this tell you, this, this bound here? It tells you only the behavior of the eigenfunction when you are at infinity. Because this function, this constant c here, 
may be arbitrarily large. You don't know anything, except actually that the expectation of this constant C is finite, right, which is provided by this, by what we see over there. But uh, we don't, you don't know very much about this constant C, and it could be arbitrarily large, okay? From such a bound, you can extract the following. So from the bound on the correlators, so these are called correlators, Later. What can you extract? Well, <coughs> what you see is that uh, the sum, right? So you have that uh, this OE in the spectrum, so I, Prime of E, right? The sum uh, E to the minus E to the gamma. I'm sorry. Here we have some constant rho, gamma minus gamma prime, right? And it's the sum over all gamma and the soup over gamma prime. Right? This is less than, uh, sorry, the expectation of this. I can put the expectation wherever I want. Uh, well, not of course in here because this is random, uh, is less than a constant, right? So what does this tell me? Uh, well, what I can do is the following. From this, you can extract. This implies that uh, omega almost surely, if you take um, for E, eigenvalue of h omega, right? You have that phi uh, gamma, phi, sorry, phi uh, at gamma is less than, uh, what can I do? I can do, for example, something of the following type. E to the, well, I can do one plus uh, and let call it, let, call, let x be a localization of phi. What does it mean? It means that phi at x is just the max. So I'm still talking about the discrete case, right? Of phi at gamma for gamma in Zd, right? So this is what I call a localization center. The point x need not be unique. Okay, it's just the point where this discrete function takes its maximum. It goes to zero at infinity, right? So it has to take its maximum somewhere, right? It's not going to happen at infinity. Uh, here you have x uh, to the... No, no, it's not gamma. Well, let me call it... Well, if you want, I could call it gamma c, if you prefer. To the minus... Uh, sorry, to the, uh, well, here, what can I, what do I need to do? I take D, I take some constant, uh, take some P, right? I'm going to tell you what P is in a moment. I have C of omega. Uh, tac, 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 and here I have minus rho gamma minus gamma C. Right? I can extract such an information about the individual eigenfunctions. Why? What is P? What is? P is a power. So for P larger than D over 2 plus maybe plus 1. I don't remember exactly what this is. P is an integer or a real number that's large enough, right? Positive real number. So what I want to do is extract from here some information about individual eigenfunctions. How do they decay? Omega here depends, the C here of omega is independent of the eigenfunction, and you have that expectation of C omega is finite. Right? And so what do you do for that? You look at the functions, right? So how do you prove this? 
um, take the, what you do is you do the following thing. So I want to do the following. I want to take the sum here over E sigma H omega and such that, so there exists, so the, the gamma C is not uniquely defined. There may be many places where you take the maximum, right? But I'm going to take the gamma C is between N and N plus one. So I call this big sum sigma, and sigma I rewrite as, so it's sigma of omega, as the sum over N larger than zero, right? Okay. Gamma prime. Okay. Uh, pop, pop, pop. I need some chalk. Oh, yeah, it should be on the second go. On, yes? Can we that's, the, that's what the talk is about. That's what the talk is about. I'm first going to explain you what the reasoning was. All right. And uh, that's what the talk is actually about. It, it needs to be there. Well, the one of the things I'm going to argue, it needs to be there, right? But the other thing I'm going to argue is it doesn't need to be there for all the eigenfunctions. Okay? So um, let me just explain this. So I have this, right? I'm going to take this. And now I assume, uh, so of course, what I know is that this is bounded by C omega, where the expectation of C omega is less than C, right? So this is just, a, right? I could call this C of omega, right? I can call, I could call it also sum of omega. I don't need, I mean, this is sigma of omega, and we just said that the expectation of sigma of omega is bounded by the constant C. Okay, this is what we just said. There's nothing new in there. And uh, so what can I do? What do I get? I get in particular, I get in particular that phi gamma. Yes. Yeah, I sum over n. I just want to, OK. Let, let, I, I just want to say that I take the gamma primes, right? This, well, I should have, I shouldn't, I, I should, I, I should, sorry? Not gamma C, but, but gamma prime. No, no, I take the, where gamma C, not gamma prime, it's gamma C. Here, I don't sum over gamma prime, I sum over, sorry, I, su I forgot one sum. I see what I forgot. I sum over gammas, this, and here I just take the eigenvalues, and I order them by, taking concentric this, where the localization center, the closest one to the origins, is sitting, right? It just means that this means that this, this condition is take the eigenfunctions that have a localization center, the closest one to the origin, you take the one that's closest to the origin in L2 norm to be in here, right? So, okay, you all measure them with the same distance. So if you have many, it doesn't matter. It just has many, okay? So that's just a way of ordering this summation. Sum of positive terms, I can reorder the way I want. 